Okay, so let's start in question number one by first finding the volume. You can write out the surfaces on an assessment on what you're adding together. I just tend to write out the formulas. So for volume, I have the volume of the cylinder, which the formula is capital B times H, or area of the base times the height, and then the hemisphere. You have the formula on your reference sheet for the volume of a sphere, but what's the volume for a hemisphere, Ben? Volume for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but we're going to take half of 4 thirds or 2 thirds. So now I'm going to directly substitute. The base for our cylinder is a circle, so the base there is going to be r squared. The 12 is the diameter, so what is the radius? And we can note the radius up here. So pi times 6 squared is the area of the base, then times the height, which is 9. So I'm going to take that volume and add it to 2 thirds pi times 6 cubed. My suggestion, this uh, question asks you to have everything in terms of pi. Even those that don't have you put everything in terms of pi, I would first rewrite it in terms of pi first because when you, some of you, when you're typing calculations or expressions with pi in the calculator, you're getting the incorrect answer. If you want to add a pi term, say 10 plus 5 pi. You don't want to do 10 plus 5 pi without the parentheses because it's going to follow order of op. However, 10 plus 5 pi it would do the 5 pi first because multiplication. But just so you don't have to worry about it, it comes before addition and order of operations, get in the habit of putting the ex pi expressions um, in parentheses when you enter it in the calculator. But 36 times 9, the volume for the cylinder should be 324 pi plus 2 thirds, 6 cubed is 216. So then 2 thirds of that is. 144. In terms of pi, we've got the 4 plus the 4, 8. 4 plus the 2, 6. 1 plus the 3. So 468 pi cubic inches. Now, surface area. So you can make note, I even, I think on my homework, uh, noted with numbers the surfaces I was finding the area of. So I need to find the area of the bottom, okay, the flat surface, which is a circle. And then number two, that's the lateral surface area of the cylinder. And then number three, the surface of the hemisphere. So I take the area of one, add it to the area of two, plus the area of three. And you don't have to do that. The area of the circle is going to be pi times six squared. What about lateral surface area for a cylinder? Formula is on your reference sheet. 2 pi, two pi r h. So 2 pi times our radius of 6 times our height of 9. We're looking at the surface area of the cylinder, the lateral surface. And then for the hemisphere, you have the formula for the total surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. So the area for the hemisphere is going to be half of 4 pi r squared, which is 2 pi r squared. So go ahead and simplify and combine the simplest term in terms of pi. You should have gotten 216 pi inches squared, or square inches. Back. In number two, to find the area, or volume rather in this case, of the solid, first make note, find your formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. Locate your formula for the volume of a, what type of pyramid do we have? Is it a square pyramid? It's a rectangular pyramid, so the base is a rectangle, so it's still one-third area of the base times the height. With the volume of a rectangular prism, you shouldn't have to look up, but it says on your reference sheet, general prism, every general prism is the area of the base times the height. So for the rectangular prism, it's just length times width times height. 
So we have length times width times height minus one third capital B, which is, but what's the base of the, yeah, it's the base area, but what are the dimensions? You do length times width. And then the height is the same, correct? So instead of doing length times width times height minus a third length times width times height, you could actually do what fraction? Two thirds of your length times width times height. So two thirds of 25 times 12 times 15, what do you get? So we get 3,000 cubic feet. Okay. In number three, we have an automatic pet feeder. It is in the shape of a cylinder and a cone, and it says that they have the same radius. Part A, we have to calculate the amount of food in cups that can be placed in the feeder. So it's how much it can hold. So for part A, we're going to look at volume. For the composite cell, we're going to look at the volume of the cylinder, whose formula is capital B times H, and the cone, whose formula is capital B, or one-third capital B times H. Substituting in, the area of the base, which is a circle, is pi times 2.5 squared. And then for the, oops, we have to multiply by the height. And then substituting in for the cone, it's going to be one-third pi times 2.5 squared times 4, the height of the cone. So that simplifies to 46.875 er, pi plus 8 and one-third pi. Typing that into the calculator, we get 173 excuse me, 0.4420944. That's the volume of the composite salad. And to find out how much food in cups, it tells us above that one cup takes up approximately 14.4 uh, cubic inches. So I want to divide the total volume by 14.4 and we get 12.04458926. So that's about 12 cups. In part B, it says a cat eats one third of a cup of food twice per day. How many days will the feeder have food without having to refill it? Now, if they the cat eats a third of a cup of food twice per day, they're eating per day two thirds cup of food. So for part B, we want to take the 12 and divide it by two thirds. So to divide, we actually multiply the 12 by the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves, and we get 36 over two, or 18 days. In number four, it says each tennis ball has a diameter of seven centimeters to the nearest square centimeter. Calculate the amount of material needed to make the can that holds the three balls. Now I realize Again, holding the balls, you think the amount of space within the canister is volume, but we're actually calculating to the nearest square centimeter, they give us a hint, the surface area. So we're designing the canister that's going to hold and if the, the three tennis balls. So if each tennis ball has a radius, or sorry, a diameter of seven, the radius would be 3.5. The total height of the cylinder is 21 centimeters. So to find the surface area, we're going to take the lateral surface area and add the top and bottom circles. Lateral surface area for a cylinder is 2 pi r times h plus 2 times pi r squared for the two circles. So we end up with 147 pi plus 24.5 pi for a total of 171 and a half pi. This does want us to round to the nearest square centimeter. So as a decimal on the calculator, that's 538.7831401, which is approximately 539 square centimeters. 
So we need approximately 539 square centimeters of material to make the can that holds three tennis balls. On the last page, find the surface area of the composite figure around to the nearest tenth. This surface of the cone, okay, is lateral surface area. And for lateral surface area, I need to look at this right triangle to calculate the slant height. So the slant height there uh, is going to be equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 4 squared. And then here, they do share the same radius. I need to calculate the slant height, which would be 4 squared plus 12 squared, as the lateral area is equal to pi r l. So I have the lateral surface of the cone on the left plus the lateral surface of the cone on the right. So the radius, 7 squared plus 4 squared, this is going to be pi times, let's actually substitute the radius of 4 pi times 4 times radical 65 plus pi times 4 times radical 160. Adding that together on the calculator, we get 260.2667311. To the nearest tenth, that's 260.3 square centimeters. Well, on the right, we just need to find the expression that can be used to determine the volume, not the actual volume. So I want to take this rectangular prism and subtract the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the rectangular prism is length times width times height minus capital B times H and for a cylinder the circle the area of the base would be pi r squared which is choice 